It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Yeah, I've got it, I've got it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. <gasps> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Oh. The aim, to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. Doubled up there. There'll be worthy winners. £1,700. Yay! And valiant losers. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Will it be the high road to glory? Loving it, loving it, loving it. Or the slow road to disaster. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Get away. Another day of adventure beckons. Motoring through the lush Northamptonshire countryside. We call all the green and green and green. This is new to you, isn't it? it is. Greenery. Yes, it's a bit of a shock for London dealer Sir Hat Armet. Out with his travel buddy, auctioneer Catherine Southern. Now, any interesting facts about where we are? I know nothing of Northamptonshire. <gasps> I do, I do know one thing about Northamptonshire. It's where my puppy came from, where my dog oh! came from, my first dog. Maybe that's not that interesting. Only to members of your fan club, Sir Hat. Their carriage for this trip is the mighty Morris Million, made before seatbelts were mandatory, but perfect in every other way. Why is she making a noise at the moment? What have you done to her? <laughs> Nothing! That bodes well. <laughs> Last time out, Catherine's bargain basement buys did better than her pricier items. Oh, I wish I'd have bought loads! Sir Hat, meanwhile, pinned all his hopes on a piece of porcelain. This is actually something quite special. And his ceramics know-how really paid off at the auction. That is immense. You're a happy little bean. Yeah. Now you look at that smile. It's grown since the last <laughs> auction. I feel like the cat I got the cream. Or the cat that got the vase. Jealous Catherine? She started this trip with £200 and has seen her finances dwindle a bit. She's currently got £159 and eight pennies for today's shopping. But Sir Hat, who started with the same amount, has had a bit of a windfall with that one big profit and has a much healthier £285.36p. Now, with one jaunt under their belt, what have our two learned about each other? I thought you would be really serious. Did you think I was oh, going to be a bit stiff and boring? Yeah! Ooh. Ooh, but you're so much fun. Oh, thanks. And you're just a very happy, cheery person. Now you have to say something nice about me. Choose your next words very carefully, Sir Hat. After kicking off in Kent on an East of England odyssey, our shoppers will be seeing the sights of the East Midlands and scooting over to East Anglia before a final auction at Nottingham. This time out, we'll be heading further eastwards, hitting the shops on the way to Newmarket in Suffolk. But we begin in the Northamptonshire village of Castle Ashby, where Catherine's been dropped off at her first shop, the Eggshell Gallery. Expect lots of delicate things, then. They advertise their specialities here as mechanical music, clocks and quirky. No shortage of the first two on display. And as for quirky, I think we've got that covered. Sir Hat, is that you? Do you think you could stop winning, please? Do you think you could stop looking so smart and making loads of profit on your last item? You can? Thanks. That would be lovely. That's him told. He's a good boy. Could have been embarrassing if that was the wrong number. Right, time to get to work. This is interesting. New Testament active service editions who were given out to all soldiers during the Second World War. But this one has something else at the back. All handwritten in pencil, and it says, to my darling Jean, for the best little wife in the world of Derek. So this is from Derek, and Derek's written three pages in pencil. So this was written in Dunkirk in 1940. And that's really very touching, isn't it? Because these are sort of ten a penny, really. But something like that, I think, is really quite quite interesting, if if it's right. The only thing that worries me with this is that the pencil is quite clear. I would have thought the pencil would have been a little bit more rubbed and perhaps a little bit more faint. It's very tempting. £30 is the price on that. Have a word with shop owner John, see if he has any more info. John, do you know anything about this in terms of the history, where it's come from? I got it from a collector. Right. Um, with some more bits and pieces. Mm. He thinks it's right. I mm. think it's right. Mm. But obviously there's always that element of doubt. 
Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm really tempted, though. I do like it very much. Would £20 give you a chance? I think a £20 little punt. Yeah. And let the market decide. OK, yeah. No, that, sound, that sounds interesting, definitely. Let's leave her pondering that one and see where Sir Hat's got to. He's meandering in the Morris over to Olney in Buckinghamshire. The antique centre at Olney is where he'll be getting things rolling today. Very handy parking spot too, look at that. Inside it's big. They've got 100 dealers all showing their wares in here, so there's lots to take in. Now, given his big win on a nice piece of pot last time out, will our Mr Porcelain head straight for the ceramics? Is the sky blue? Is water wet? Oh, wow. This is something I need to look at. What I tell you? Weemsware, so Scottish pottery, founded in 1882. And this is the cabbage rose pattern. Very, very collectible, especially because Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, collected this. It's all hand painted, beautifully marked. So what do we have here? Yep, the price is 365, and that's about right. It's also out of my budget, but it's such a nice piece. One to aspire to, perhaps. I'm sure there'll be cheaper bits of china around here if you want to scratch that particular itch. Not something I see very often, actually. This is really cool. French, it's a part tea set, so there's only two cups and saucers. Probably a coffee set, actually. I've just seen the coffee bottle. That's not a tea bottle. It's sometimes referred to as a tete-a-tete, head-to-head, two people having coffee. This dates to about 1905, 1910. So it kind of sits in stylistically somewhere in between Art Nouveau and Art Deco. And I love this cobbled blue colour. It really kind of pops and it's just so nice that it's complete. And it can be yours for £42. That's really good. This is probably going to be something... I'd like to do a deal on. He's in his element here. Meanwhile, over in Castle Ashby, with that special little Bible on the potentials pile, Catherine's moved on to other things. This I like, a stationary folder. I love the cover here. This looks very sort of arts and crafts and almost a bit sort of William Morris with these interlocking shapes here and the mythical figure heads at the top. It's just got a lovely feel about it. I'd like to think that this was all inlaid, perhaps satin wood inlay, but it's not. As you run your fingers across it, there's no, it's not raised in any way, and it's not transferred either. It's a nice thing. And it's priced up at £35. There's a little bit of stationery still left inside. To have this on your desk today, that would look rather nice. I don't think anyone would say no to that. Well, in that case, it's back to John we go. John, I've had a lovely time walking around. Thank you very much. You've got so much, so many interesting <laughs> items. Um, one of the things that I saw earlier, you may recall, was the Bible. But I've just had a look at this, which I quite like, the stationery folder, really nice thing. Is there any discount on the price there? You got 35 on it. If I do the stationery thing for the same money, for 20. Wonderful. OK, well, I will have both of them then. £40 all in. Leaves her with just under £120. Thank you. Thank you. See bye you bye. again. Bye-bye. I think she's rather pleased with those. Now back to Bucks, where our other shopper has moved on from the porcelain and is trying his hand at something else. Oh, that's really cute. Oh, going for glass this time. So this is a piece of glass decorated by Mary Gregory. Mary Gregory was a decorator in America in the mid to late 19th century. And she and her followers decorated the glass on top with enamels, hand-coloured enamels. They're always of children. So that's very, very typical. Firstly, is the size. That would be classed as a miniature. And the fact that the face of the child is in different colours. So normally we just see the white. But in this case, they've used colour to achieve her hair and her flesh, so I think that's really, really cute. £35 is the price on that. I think that might be something that I end up buying. Well, there's no time like the present. You'll need to have a chat with Nick, the man in charge. Ah, Nick, hi. There you hi. are. Hi. Got a couple of pieces. I want okay. to ask you about the first is a little jug. It's priced about 35 and the second piece is, to your left, there's a set in the blue and white. Yep, I think it's got 42 on the ticket. It does indeed. What would be 
the best price if I took the two lots. Well, that's 42. We can do that for 25. OK. And I think we can do 25 for that one as well. That's marvellous. Making 50 for the pair. Fine, you've got a deal. That's Wonderful. great. Well, that was all very straightforward, and he still has a very healthy £235 and change to play with. So off he pops with the aplomb of a French cafe waiter. And look, someone's even turned the car around for a quick getaway. How about that for service? Now, Catherine's called a halt to shopping for the day and is turning her attention to less earthly matters. She's made her way further east to the market town of Bedford to find out how the town's largest church, St Paul's, helped to boost the country's spiritual well-being during World War II. James, Hello, lovely welcome. to see you. Local historian James Collett White has the story of how the BBC turned this 13th century church into a radio studio broadcasting to the nation and British troops fighting overseas. The story doesn't start actually in Bedford. It starts in London. Imagine the Blitz, the danger of being destroyed by bombing. And so the BBC decides that they're going to move the music and the religious department to somewhere safer. Wow. Thanks to its direct rail link to the capital and the enthusiastic petitioning of the town's mayor, the corporation chose Bedford as its new location. In July 1941, two orchestras and a host of radio engineers and other staff, around 400 people in all, arrived by special train in the town. There were a number of buildings that were used, uh, particularly for the music department. Mm. They occupied the corn exchange, which is just behind us. Mm -hmm which uh, still is used for, for concerts and so on. And the religious services department was going to be in what was called Studio 6, which was, in fact, the Trinity Chapel of this church. So from here, over a 1,000 religious broadcasts went out in the years from July 1941 to July 1945. Once it was wired for sound, Studio 6's main responsibility was to broadcast the daily service, a mainstay of the broadcasting schedule since 1928. These services would have helped immensely with morale, allowing people at home in Britain to worship alongside their family members fighting abroad. Wow, this is beautiful. We're now in the heart of Studio 6, is that right? We are, absolutely. So they were religious services every morning? Yes, they were. And when it was broadcast, it was described as coming from somewhere in England because they obviously didn't wish the German or Italian bombers to know where it was because it might have been something that they might have wished to get rid of. The crowning achievement of Studio 6's output took place in September 1941. A service as part of the National Day of Prayer was led by the Archbishops of Canterbury and York with contributions from church leaders from Scotland and Northern Ireland. The music department provided singers for the service and to give Catherine a flavour of the occasion, St Paul's has a trio of their own today. After the Second World War, what happened to the BBC? The BBC began to return to London. There was the last service on the 26th of September and the papers were filled with regret at their leaving us. But there was also pride in the town's role in lifting the spirits of the nation during the dark days of the war. And to commemorate this, the church floor now bears this inscription containing the corporation's motto, Nation shall speak peace unto nation. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sir Hat's motoring on. The car is just driving beautifully today. I really, really don't want to give it back to Catherine. 
likes to be in the driving seat as our Sir Hat. He's also heading over to Bedfordshire to the village of Willington. His next shop, time after time, is handily bedded in to this garden centre. So with £235 odd, he could pick up a nice Victorian jardinier and an ask for Distra to go in it if the fancy took him. And it's all under the watchful eye of Steve the Cat. Do you have lots of ideas of where I can buy an antique? Oh, OK, well, that's a reply. I think Steve's a Catherine Southern fan, actually. You're on your own, Sir Hat. Oh, hang on. He spotted something. Art Nouveau. Typical Art Nouveau. Fantastic motif here. It's almost like a heart shape, which is quite fitting, actually, because this is a jewellery box. Silver plated. I would love it to be silver at that price. That price being £145. Yeah, it's a little bit stained on the inside, but it's got a lovely weight to it. No key. Finding a few problems with this, but I still really love it. I just think that's such a nice tactile thing. Yeah, let's pop that on the potentials list then and see if there's anything else. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Well, that took no time at all. I confess I know nothing. I mean nothing about clocks. But that's really caught my attention because of the style of it. So, really late 19th century to really early 20th century. It's got a brass face in two tones, polished so you can see the numbers, and it's all encased in this beautiful oak, is it, I would say? And if we look around the back, I'm expecting this to be a pendulum clock, that much I do know. Yep, there it is. We'll make an horologist of you yet, Sir Hat. That one's also priced at £145. This one really stands out to me for all the styling points. Put that one on the list too, then. And I don't think he's done with this place just yet. Lots of mirrors, lots of clocks. Nice item. Am I brave enough? <laughs> hang on, hang on. Seven years bad luck, don't forget, so be careful. Bingo. That's heavy. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. I think that's beautiful. So it's a Art Deco mirror with a black glass frame. So yeah, 1930s. I would say French or English. What I love about it is that it's not clear glass. It's not a plain silvered glass. It's this champagne tinted mirror. And it's priced at 95 pounds. That's a definite maybe. I don't think I'm brave enough to put it back up, though. I might just leave it down here. Probably wise. I think it's time we had a chat with shopkeeper Sean. Sean? Yes? We found three things. So, I've got this Art Nouveau silver-plated box. Over there, there's an Arts and Crafts clock. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Art Deco mirror with the kind of champagne-tinted... Yeah, I took yeah. it off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For safekeeping. Yeah, OK. I think I want to buy two of the items, but tell, tell me what you could do. Let's start with that box. The best I could do on that would probably be 125. Similarly, on the clock, drop that down to 125. And the mirror, the best I could probably do on that would be 85. I'd really like the mirror and then, I don't know, the, the clock probably more than yeah. the box. That's still a hefty 210 pounds. Brace yourself, Sean. I'm going to be... I'm cheeky. I'm going to be cheeky. I'd really like to pay 175. Does that work? And that's really pushing me a little bit. <laughs> okay. But 180 and you've got yourself a deal. Excellent. I'm going to count some money out. So that's 110 for the clock and 70 pounds for the mirror. And once he's finished shelling out all that cash, let's go and pick up Catherine. And he should have come up with a compliment for her by now. You're very earthy. I'm earthy. You're a good soul. I'm earthy. You're an earthy good soul. It means one with nature, natural... Earthy. Mother Earth type. I'd stop digging if I were you, Sir Hatch. Nighty night. We're up bright and early and find ourselves in Cambridgeshire. Very wide vistas. You can see for miles. <gasps> wait, wait, look at all the bunnies. Look at all the bunnies. <gasps> oh, my goodness. That's not a bunny. That's very big. What are they? That's They're huge. not bunnies. <laughs> no, Sir Hat, they're deer. Bunnies are small. 
those are very far away. It's it's funny. Funny. You've been in London too long. I don't know. City slickers. Yesterday, our amateur naturalist went spending crazy, getting his paws on an Art Deco mirror, a mantel clock, a tete-a-tete -tete coffee set and a tiny glass jug. I think that's really, really cute. And that whole lot left him with just £55.36 and pence in his pocket. Catherine was a bit more frugal, only spending £40 on a stationary folder. I don't think anyone would say no to that. And one other thing she's dying to share. Ah, the New Testament. Yeah, but if you turn to the back very, very carefully... Oh! There's a dedication to my darling Jean. It's basically three pages of poetic verse written from this soldier... To well, his love. ..from Dunkirk in 1940. How do we know it wasn't written last week? Oh, <laughs> He's got no romance, that man. Later, all their items will be off to auction in Suffolk at Beckles. But today's antics begin in that ancient seat of learning, Cambridge. And having commandeered the car, this one's for Catherine. Cam's Antique Centre. In you go, then. It's a veritable cornucopia in here. Lots of fine art, furniture and interesting objects, some of which can baffle even the most seasoned of treasure hunters. What on earth are these? These are really garish. What are they? From a distance, I thought they're ski <laughs> skis, but they're definitely not skis. Oh, that would have been my guess too. Have a look at the ticket. Fairgrounds stall from shooting gallery. Oh, I see. So when you've got your coconut shy or your shooting gallery, you know, the shoot a duck or something like that. This would be around the outside. This would be the sort of framework, I suppose. This sort of fairground memorabilia can make ridiculous amounts of money at auction. What's, what's it got on it? Oh, 225, I haven't got that much, have I? Not even close, girl. I think you'll have to roll up and try your luck somewhere else. Something smaller, perhaps. These are right up my street. They look like they should be drawer handles, but they're not. That's fabulous. These are actually bell pulls, and so you'd pull the handle down like this, and then it would ding, ding you rang, my lord. That is very cool. I could do with those at one o'clock towers. You've got this sort of raised acorn motif with the oak leaf behind, so real sort of regency. And then either side there, you've got the double eagle's head. I really like these. Very affordable too. £16 is the asking price. So if you had one of those old-fashioned toilets, you know, with the cistern above, and then you could have them attached to the cord that you would pull, that would impress your guests, wouldn't it? No matter what, these are definitely being bought today. Fabulous. I think she quite likes them, then. Now, what else can you find? These are cool. These are very cool. Do you know what these remind me of? Looking at them from a distance, they remind me of jelly moulds. I'm thinking Victorian jelly moulds, but they're actually a pair of bookends. Mahogany bookends. Late 19th century. I love those. I just love the shape of them. I love the fact that they make me think of jelly, and I love jelly. Who doesn't? £40 is the price on those. I'd like to see these at sort of £25 and then the hope that they would make sort of £50 maybe at auction. Certainly food for thought, jelly. I'm going to go off and see what Sheila thinks. Sheila being the lady in charge today. Hello, Sheila. Sheila, I've had such a good time. Oh, good. First of all, these Regency bell pulls, which I think are great fun. Is there anything you can do on these? You've got £16 on the ticket. Thinking of anything particular price-wise? Um, maybe 12? Can you do that? Yeah. Can you do 12 on them? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Amazing. I also found the bookends. You've got £40 on those. Can you do anything on them? 28? Can you do just a smidge more? Is there any way you could do 25 on those? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Brilliant. £37 in total, then. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. 
Wish me luck. Thank you. <laughs> yes, good luck. That haul leaves her with a little over £82 still in hand. She's making this money go a long way, isn't she? <laughs> Time to move on, I'd say. Now, is there anything more tranquil than a nice walk in the countryside? Sir Hat's parked his shopping for now and is at and about near the Cambridgeshire village of Wilburton, where, just off this leafy lane, there's something that's about to shatter the peace and quiet. A display of riding skills, noisy thrills and just a little bit of danger. Well, it is called the Wall of Death. Ah, you must be Ken. Good morning, Sir Hat. Would you like to come inside and see the show? Yes, please. Let's go up the stairs. The owner of this attraction, Ken Fox, is also the patriarch of a daredevil dynasty that have been wowing the crowds for generations. Defying gravity on two wheels has been in the blood of Ken's family since his grandfather first rode the wall in 1931. But the history of this spectacle goes back even further. The very first parts of the Wall of Death was brought board track racing in America. So they had big, big circular board tracks. And they got steeper and steeper as they went round the corners. So in 1913, they still had steep tracks. But by 1920, they really built these vertical walls and toured around, and it became a show instead of just a, a normal race. And around America, there was a lot of walls of deaths, or silodromes, as they were also called. So when did it become popular in the UK? It first landed on the shores of the UK, either 1928 or 1929. Back in the 1920s, early 30s, to have a motorbike or a motor car in your town or a village was quite a feat. Yeah. To see one on a, a vertical wall, that was unbelievable. With early riders such as Billy and Marjorie Ward pulling in the crowds, these shows were real money spinners. By the late 30s, there were over 40 walls of death around the country. But with fairs closed down during World War II and the walls being stripped of wood for the war effort, most of these travelling attractions went to the wall, literally. But Ken's family got back in the saddle and carried on riding. So my granddad rode, my father rode, my uncle rode, my, my grandmother also rode for a short period of time. I ride, both my children ride, both my daughter-in-laws ride, and my niece rides. So, so uh, we, we've got quite a long, long historic part with it. How old were you when you started? I was 15 when I started, but... <laughs> My two boys, they were 11 when they started. 15, I mean, that's just incredible. And my dad, he's 74, and he will still come down and ride. <laughs> OK. It's definitely in your DNA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not just the family. Some of Ken's bikes go back a long way, too. The earliest Indian we've got is 1921, so that makes it 100 years old this year. Yeah. Properly in the antiques, rotary. <laughs> and the Indians were built with a left-hand throttle, for the American police force so that they could pull the gun with their right hand and shoot the gangsters. It looks like they are defying the laws of physics when they're going round. They're actually working with the laws of physics. They're just defying what you expect them to do. Yeah, which is to fall off. Yeah. <laughs> so how are they staying up? There's two items that keep them on the wall. The centrifugal force pushes them towards the wall and the friction of the rubber on the wood. Now, can I give you the offer of the best seat in the house? You can. Uh... Down below. Rather you than me, Sir Hat. Wow, looks great from down here. If you're going to stand inside, don't get dizzy. OK, I'm going to stay right here, though. OK. <laughs> I'm not coming up with you. And don't forget to breathe in. <laughs> Sadly, these spectacles of speed didn't get a revival after the war. There are now only four remaining walls of death left in the UK, and Ken owns two of them. His family of hell riders travel across the country to show their feats of daring to the public, and it looks like they won't slow down for generations to come. Bravo! 
Meanwhile, with wheels firmly on the horizontal surface, Catherine's on the move. Come on, G up. Let's see what we can find. Giddy up. That's a bit of a hint to her next destination. Birthplace of the Sport of Kings, Newmarket. This Suffolk town has been involved with the GG since 1605, and having stapled the motor, <laughs> Catherine is champing at the bit to get shopping. Treasures Antiques is the name of this place, and judging from the vast array of wonderful items on display, I'd say that's a very apt moniker. And with £82 and change still in hand, it's odds on our girl can find something to suit. I like this. This is cool. What is that? That is a tea strainer. That's an English tea strainer. So you've got the handle there, which is wooden, ebonized handle. And here you'd open this up and put your tea leaves in. But importantly, what's it in the shape of? I know this. It's a bed warmer. And that's what Victorians or Edwardians would put inside bed to make it nice and warm and cosy and toasty. You would think that it would probably be Victorian because Victorians loved to have something like this and make it in the shape of something different. But it's not. Looking at the hallmark there, it's actually 1922, so it's actually quite late. Priced up at £89. But is it your cup of tea, Catherine? I've never seen anything like this. I think this is quite unusual. Go and find another one. That's pretty cool. Well, let's see if you can do a deal, girl. Patrick? Yes? Hi. Can Hi. I just ask you about your tea strainer? You've got £89 on it. Is there a good deal that can be done well, on it? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm all ears at the okay. moment. So, yeah, by all means, you know, you can... The worst I can say is no. Can I say £50? You can, yes. That's an offer. <laughs> he hasn't said no yet. Do you know what? I think you've got a deal. Have we got a deal? I'll accept £50 for it. Fantastic. He said yes! £50 paid, £30 left over, job done. And in the nick of time, too. Cos there's that Sir Hat coming up on the rails. With only a little over £55 to his name and such a choice on offer, I think he's going to be feeling the pressure. Can you see that? That is the concentration muscle, that vein there. And I, I really need to concentrate because there's so much stuff here. I just want to find that one thing that's going to give me a nice little profit. Oh, he's so tense. At the other end of the scale, with all her shopping done, Catherine has time for a mooch about. We've got a lovely selection of jockeys racing silks. And when in Newmarket, the home of horse racing... Come on, I've got to get this on. It would be churlish not to. Green's definitely your colour. Here we go. I think I'm all ready. We need to saddle up and go and find the horse. Good luck with that. I think Sir Hat is looking to find something a bit smaller. Oh, hang on. That's far more interesting than a cup and saucer. I like that. But hang on, there's two. A pair's always better than one. Café, coffee, and le, milk. Silver-plated, and they're English, but inscribed in French. So they're made for the French market. Perhaps for a cruise liner, perhaps for a train running through France. Who knows? But look at the style. I think they're just absolutely glamorous. I love them. But at £79 for the two, they're a bit out of your budget. If I smile a lot, if I'm a little bit cheeky, Patrick might let me have those for £55.36. Time to turn up the charm, Patrick. Look what I found. Lovely, good choice. If I say to you the ticket says £79... OK. Can you do it so for £55.36? Well, it's a little bit of a knock because they are a nice pair, but I want you to walk away from here with something. And so £55.36p, you've just bought them. Good. Let's give you some money. Lovely. Well, that's wiped him out completely. But I think we're off to the races. Isn't that right, Catherine? ta -da! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't... So you love it? Give us a 12. A 12. Oh, very nice. I like the little bow at the back. Lovely. And I'll race you upstairs. Come on, then. Lordy, you do know it's time for shut-eye, don't you? Oh, well. 
Now, after all that terrible, gruelling shopping, there's nothing like a trip to the seaside to clear the cobwebs and to watch an auction. Race right. to the Dodgem. Race, yeah. Oh, look at this! Are you really all racing? Yeah. <laughs> I think someone's overexcited. Having started out in Northamptonshire, our pair have hit the pier at Clacton-on-Sea in Essex for some fun and games. Their purchases have carried on up to Suffolk and the town of Beckles. Durrance Auctions is where the action is, with bids online, on the book and on the phones. Sir Hat spent his entire £285.36p on five auction lots. Let's find out what the auctioneer Nicholas Rudge makes of them. The Arts and Craft 8 Day Clock is a Wittenberg in good condition. Uh, we think it'll do well. Time will tell how it goes. Oh, very good. Catherine was a little more cautious, spending just £127 on her five lots. Any prizes in there, Nicholas? The Soldier's New Testament from World War II. Without the inscription, it would, would hardly sell. It would make very little money. With inscription, we expect, we expect it to sell pretty well. So, will this be a roller coaster or just swings and roundabouts? Better strap yourselves in. Sir Hat, this is the best. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I can't believe this. This is a great idea. I'm very happy. Shall we see how we did yeah, at the auction? Let's get on to the serious This business. could be a car crash. <laughs> let's find out. Starting with Sir Hat's mantle clock, his biggest spend. So I'm going to start at £45. £45 bid, £45.50. Five, 55 with me. A 55 Jumping, pound. sir. 55, pound. Else want to join in? Commission bid. Oh, uh, yeah. With me at 55 pound. With me at 55 pound. Oh, sir. So Thank you. Well, half your money back is better than nothing back. That's a very positive spin on quite a hefty loss. There's plenty to play for. More things to go for. Oh. Right, what's next? That'll be your stationery folder, Catherine. Let's see if the auctioneer can push the envelope. Ten pound bid. A ten pound twelve. Twelve pound. Twelve pound fifty. Fifteen. Fifteen. You're bid at fifteen. Eighteen. Oh, no. Come twenty on. now. Eighteen then. I thought that was really pound, cheap 20, at twenty. Eighteen pound. Thank you. That's even cheaper at eighteen. <laughs> yes, nothing to write home about, was it? Well, someone's just got a lovely bargain. Oh. Oh well. Mind. Let's see if Sir Hat's Art Deco mirror can show a profit. Thirty pound, somebody. Thirty pound bid. A £30.5, 35, 35, 35, 35, 40, 40 pound, 40 pound, 40 pound, 5. That's not like, bad. 5, 45, 50 if you like, 50, we made 50. Last chance at 50 pounds. Do you know what? I think that's a good price. Well, you would. It wasn't your item. Is it going <laughs> to put you off buying mirrors? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Next up are those mahogany bookends. Anyone else hankering for a jelly about now? Tenner, anybody? Five of them. Anybody oh five God. Of them? Ten pound bid. Ten pound. Twelve. Fifteen. 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 Eighteen. At eighteen pound twenty, if you like. At eighteen pound, you're sure gonna sell. Oh, they're worth more Last than eighteen pounds. At eighteen pounds. Ooh. Thank you. Oh my goodness me. That was hard. Neither of them is having much luck today. It would seem. Oh well. It's all right, I suppose. Mm. Not really. Not really. <laughs> Chin up, surely Sir Hat's milk and coffee pots will put a pet back in your step. Thirty pound. Thirty pound. Twenty. No, you surprised me. Yeah, twenty pound bid. A twenty pound, twenty pound, twenty pound. The maiden bid at twenty pound. Anyone wants to join in? Twenty pound. Oh. Twenty two. Thought you might. Twenty two pound. Twenty five. Twenty five pound. Twenty five. <laughs> Last chance then at twenty five pound. Thank you. Call the police, Catherine. I will call the someone police. Someone has stolen my what Cafe is... Ole pots. <laughs> no, bought fair and square, they were. Just not the price you wanted. Clearly. It was a gamble. It was a gamble, by the looks of things. I applaud your gamble. Well, coffee didn't do it. Let's see if tea fares any better. Catherine's novelty strainer. Lovely little item is to start me £50, somebody 50. Please. £30 then, surely. No £30? Twenty pounds, surely. Twenty pound bid, five thirty. Thirty pound, five forty. Forty pound. Forty pound, forty pound, five anywhere. You sure then? Please. Last chance. Come on. Sell. Thought it'd make more. No. I thought it would make more. Thank you. Oh, that hurts. It's really not going their way today, is it? That's six straight losses. Maybe all the bed warmer collectors were still in bed. <laughs> oh, that'll be it. Now, Sir Hat's little Mary Gregory style glass jug. Ten. Whoops. Anyway, tenner. Tenner? No. 
Five of them, surely. Oh, come, come on. Five. Yeah, five pound bid, eight, eight pound, ten. Ten pound. Twelve anywhere now. A ten pound, this is a really pound, unusual pound, thing, pound, isn't it? Ten, ten, ten pound last chance, going to go then. Fair warning at ten pound. Thank you. The hammer went down and my heart sunk. Oh, so hurt. I think some kind words are in order, Catherine. I'm sorry for you on that, because I think that was that was a good spot. It I was, it was. I thank you. Right, come on, Catherine, your Regency handles have got to ring somebody's bell. £30 if you like, 30. 20. 10. Oh gosh. Bell pulls there for tenner, surely. Oh please, I don't want to jump off the roller coaster. 15, 15, 18, 18, 18, 20, 20 pounds. 20 pound, 20 pound, 20 pound, two if you like. Two, 22, 22 pound, a 22 pound. Oh, come pound, on, I thought they'd make anywhere. more than that. 20 to sure, 22 pound, five, 25 just in time, 28, 28 pound, fill it up to 30. Come on, pull it up 20, to 30, pound. pull that bell. Last chance, I'm going to sell them then. For 28 pounds, thank you. Well, I'm pleased, but I thought they might take off. They, they, they look like they would. Well, at least we finally have our first profit. Hooray! you more than doubled. Yeah, no. So I'd be happy. I'm pleased with that. <laughs> Sir Hat's last hope for success. Will his tete-a-tete -tete coffee set turn any heads? I've got commission interest here to clear the sheets. So I'm going to start at £40. 40 hey. pound You've made a pound, huge pound, profit already. Kind of. £50. £50 with me. Commission Ooh. bit of £50. £50. Uh, £55. You've beaten me. Come on. You're a online at £55. Come on, come on, come on. £55. £55. £55. £55. That's brilliant. Last chance and away online at £55. Thank you. I think that's really good. Given his current run of luck, I'd say it was amazing. I think I should stick to ceramics. <laughs> <laughs> stick to what you know, sir. Huh? You obviously do it very well, sir. Well, huh? well that's yeah. a fantastic result. Thank you. And finally, Catherine's chanciest item, her World War II Bible with an inscription. Will the bidders buy in to Derek and Jean's love story? I want to believe in it. I want, I want to believe that there's romantics out there as well. Yeah. £30 bid straight in online. Hooray! Hallelujah! 45 online. 45! Oh my goodness! £50 bid. £50 phone. It's yeah. so romantic. <laughs> 60 if you like. Feeling the love. This is, good. This is great. Oh, I'm so happy. The bid's online at £65. You've beaten the phones. I'm going to sell online then at £65. Thank you. That was £65. Yes. Amazing, amazing, oh. amazing. What a way to finish, eh? Who says romance is dead? But congratulations. Thank you. I think I've probably made a, a little yeah, smidge of a, yeah, of a profit. Yeah, I think but... so. And I've made a humongous loss. Well, that's the fun of the fair, isn't it? It was like a ride on the Big Dipper for Sir Hat, as his healthy £285 budget plummeted. After auction costs, he's left with £159.90 and a slightly queasy feeling. But it's Catherine who wins the cuddly toy. She began with £159.08 and made a modest profit. After auction fees, she now has £170.66p. And remarkably, she's now in the lead. I think you've earned a little treat, don't you? Are you ready for this? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be back on the road soon enough, but for now, scream yeah. if you want to go faster. <laughs> <laughs>